Okay, I just uh, got off a Skype call, was informed that my third eye is shining yet again. Yes, uh, the light bulb is right up there, obviously. I'm in my office in our house in Switzerland, and uh, trying to look at what was motivating me, or what still motivates me, but what, when I did my first class over 22 years ago, and I calculate by my daughter's age, because I met my wife shortly after my first class, and we had our first baby, so maybe 23 years ago, if me is 21, or, well, they change every year, all six of them, and it's so confusing, but what I, I was, I was doing a whole bunch of seminars, I did, uh, and the number of seminars that I did is almost, well, it's not uncountable, but I, to go back and go through them, and a lot of them, you know, would be recommendations. I went to channelers and uh, emotional healing workshops, and a lot of them just didn't gel. And then I would go to the highly motivated, over-caffeinated guys who wanted me to live uh, the life of their dreams. I mean, if you listen to me, you'll live the life of... Uh my dreams. Right? And I'm thinking, I don't want the life of your dreams. I want to live my life, and I want to enjoy my life, and I have, want to have fun, and I want to be happy. And uh, as I was doing these seminars, I wasn't really sure what I was looking for. Right? There was this vague sense that, that something just wasn't, not, not right, just missing, kind of. And when I did my first seminar, uh, when I took my first seminar in the self-actualization learning technologies, uh, and I was asked, where was my life on a scale from 1 to 10? I said 8. But the, the 20 percent, and my life was good, and it is good, but my life was, you know, I was a young doctor. I had my own practice. Uh, I wasn't married. I had girlfriends. Uh, I drove to the beach on weekends. I, I was doing a lot of what I wanted to do, and my life, when I looked around and compared it with other people, it was great. I really didn't have any area to complain. And I didn't complain much, especially when I was busy with patients. That was the other thing that I had in place was I had a, a, a job that I loved. I, I worked for myself, which was a little difficult because uh, I've told people over the years uh, that I've worked for the biggest asshole I ever met, and that would be me, of course. Um, and uh, because I was self-employed, after a while, I enjoyed my associateships uh, when I didn't have all the responsibilities of uh, uh, sole proprietorship, but uh, what got me to continue to do classes was just this uh, almost a, a light sense of desperation that things had to be better than what they were, and after my first class, I saw that everything was perfect, and everything was, you know, in my life had been and will be up until then perfect, and I see that, and I don't always hang on to it. Even living life now, I'll get into it and I'll think, well, man, it's not, this is not perfect. I will know logically, but I won't know experientially. When I can go to the experience of it, then things relax. Yeah. And so, that's all I want. If, if you're looking, if you're at desperate out there and you're not sure, and desperation didn't even seem like the right word. I'll tell people you're desperate. No, no, I'm living a good life. But then when we look at it, there's a desperation. That pushes people to do a weekend with me. I mean, my weekends are three days long, and... Uh, it takes a little desperation to put up with me for three days. www.micpperformance.com